and can you talk about like what was your role as a resident at google like what did, what projects did you get to work on over there and how did that build up your uh, expertise or knowledge in machine learning uh, how how did you file, how did you use that program to maybe pivot your uh, efforts into the machine learning space yeah i mean uh, so i think the residency is a fantastic opportunity because at the time there would no be no other way for me to do research. I was very, I was already uh, in an in, in industry applied lane. I wasn't planning to do a PhD. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, it was this was my chance to sample research, and if not, I just wouldn't have done research. <laughs> so it, it really was, a, I think, at least in my case, definitely the purpose of what the residency was meant to do. That being said, when I arrived, I realized that many of my colleagues already had PhDs and were in the residency program. So <laughs> um, I think that there's this tricky thing where the, the people who ended up in the residency uh, ended up some being very almost overqualified for the residency. So I would say it was um, it, it was a very intense year. And the reason I say that is that uh, you, there was a momentum because you had all this access to all these resources that also came with responsibility. Like you feel like this sense that now I, I need to produce something, like I need to do research. Um, and I, I think that often years like that are very good for crystallizing and creating momentum around projects. Uh, but they're very stressful years. So I would say the residency for, for me was a very stressful year. Um, I definitely uh, recommend it to anyone, uh, but I think part of what made it stressful in my case was that my cohort had already, a lot of them already had PhDs. So I've since advocated internally that we need to be doing more to uh, actually have more people who don't have PhDs, who are diverse in different ways. Um, because otherwise it ends up a little bit like uh, you are just swimming up this current and all these people already have all these papers that they were developing during that PhD and are now pivoting. Um, but that being said, the beauty of something like the residency is that uh, you get to determine your research agenda. So you ask what I worked on. I mean, I could choose what I wanted to work on. And more than that, I could also um, do multiple projects in a year. So I chose interpretability, um, which was very much rooted in my desire to understand more about machine learning. Uh, but I, I also got to choose choose and experience many different collaborations, which is amazing. And it's still a freedom that is part of being a researcher where you get to work with many different people and experience different collaborations. Um, and how did it relate to the rest of my experience at Google? Um, I decided I loved research. I mean, I think I'm spoiled because I love both applied problems as well as research, um, but it gave me, um, there were a few things that I liked. It allowed me to connect back to uh, my joy in teaching. So I, I spent residency doing a lot of research, but I also went back to Africa to teach. Um, and last year I was part of the new Ghana lab AI in Africa. Um, so we just opened a new lab there and I helped this set it up. Um, and then the other aspect of it is that uh, with research, a lot of what you're doing is mentoring other people with research. So I've really enjoyed collaborating widely and collaborating with people who are um, not just within Google, but outside Google. Um, and that's not really possible within an applied setting because often you have... Um, uh, you have questions of uh, IP and you're not able to publish everything. And that's the beauty of working in research is that you get to publish um, and share things open source. Mm 